Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be talking about our GPS watches and how we can optimize our data screens or activity screens, whatever you want to call it, to get the most out of training and also just make it more enjoyable and easy to use when going out for runs and all that. Now the first thing I want to preface is to talk about auto lapping. Auto lap is referring to when your watch beeps every kilometer and you get the split for each kilometer as you go on a run. Now I've had this feature off for many years now and I recommend a lot of people to do the same because I've never thought of any use case for it in the past few years and yeah, I don't think I'll ever go back to it as well now that I know what I know from having auto lap off. Why do I have auto lap off? There are a few reasons. One of the reasons is because one, I don't like obsessing over data and I like to try and keep everything really simple and minimal in my life. I think it's one less thing you need to worry about and hear and see while you're running to take away from the experience. At the end of the day, I'm running for the pure joy of it and yeah, I don't want to get like overtaken by all the numbers and look at my watch every single kilometer to see what the last kilometer was. But ironically, it's also helpful in terms of data when you do turn auto lap off. And the biggest reason for this is because when you're doing a race that's hilly or there's technical parts or even an ultra marathon where you take breaks and stuff, it's actually super useful to have auto lap off because if you have a slower kilometer or a faster kilometer and you want to make sure that you're on track for pace, all you have to do before the run is to calculate what average pace you have to hold in order to hit your goal time. So let's say you're aiming for a 16 minute 5k. If you hold 312 per kilometer, you will run a 16 minute 5k. And the benefit of knowing that you need to hold 312 per kilometer and having auto lap off is now you don't have to worry about what the last split was for the last kilometer. And all you have to do is focus on making sure your average pace for the entire run is staying at 312 per kilometer. So if you do happen to have a slower kilometer in the last kilometer, it might bring your average pace for the entire run up by a little bit it, but all you need to know is to increase the pace a tiny bit to get back to 312 per kilometer and then you're back on track. The benefit of this is that even if you're 2.78 kilometers into a run which is a very random number, I know that if I'm at 312 per kilometer average pace for the entire run, I'm on track to run 16 flat in the 5k. It works the same if you're at 3.12 kilometers, 3.27 kilometers, any time in a 5k run, I know that if I'm on 312 per kilometer, I'm on track for the right time. This is super helpful as well for any level runner because if you think about an ultra marathon and there's like harsh cutoff times. Let's say you have to average eight minutes per kilometer to make the cutoff time for a trail race. If you have auto lap on and you see this nine minute K and then seven minute K, 6.30 K and then 5.30 per K and then like a 10 minute K because you walked a bit more because it was technical. It can get pretty confusing and hard to keep track of whether you're on pace or not. But if we just make sure that the average pace for the entire run is eight minutes per kilometer or faster, then you know that you're on track to meet the cutoff time. So I don't see any scenario where where having auto lap on will be beneficial in my personal training at least. And I hope other people can see my perspective on why it's super helpful to have auto lap off. So now we're gonna move on to my data screen or activity screen, whatever you wanna call it. Obviously with a lot of watches, you get multiple pages. So you have page one, page two, page three, page four. I think Coros can have up to maybe six pages of activity screens, which is super helpful, especially when you're doing different types of runs all the time, like me, because I do trail running, ultra running, road running, track running, and yeah, just having those multiple settings can make it super handy. Now first and foremost, the first page is obviously important because we want to get a good idea of the whole picture of the run. And yeah, it's the page that we're going to be on most of the time when we're doing our easy jogs and long runs and whatever. Now apologies if I look down a little bit because um, I have the screen on my phone so that I can kind of refer to it and talk about it. So on my first page, I have the distance at the top and then I have the pace, the lap pace, the elevation gain, the cadence, and also the total activity time. Now let's quickly go through everything. Distance and total activity time and also current pace is pretty obvious. Um, it's super helpful to have that and it's kind of nice to know that as well. Um, lap pace is pretty helpful because if I'm going out for an easy 50 minutes or easy 60 minutes or an easy long run, I can just look at the lap pace to see what my average for the entire run is because obviously if you have auto lap off, we know that even if you're 7.8 k's into a run, the lap pace will be the indicator for what your average pace is for the entire run because the entire run is one lap when you have auto lap off unless you hit the lap button. But we'll talk more about the lap button later. Now elevation gain, I do a lot of trail running, I care about how much climbing I'm doing in a run. Especially when I'm training for races like Bondi and Manly, I want to do a bare minimum of like 1800 meters of elevation in a week and I like to try and keep track of how much climbing I'm doing per run. So I would have runs where I go out and I'm like, I want at least 500 meters of elevation and I can keep track of that on the first page without needing to scroll to the second page or anything like that. Now cadence, I don't really look at it, 
but sometimes it's nice to kind of look down and see what you are doing at a given pace or like a given effort and and also it's interesting to kind of keep track of what shoes tend to increase your cadence or decrease your cadence because your shoes can have a bit of an effect on cadence but also so many different factors and yeah it's just a nice data point to have sometimes for me to look at now we're going to move on to page two of my activity screen now this is a very very important screen to have especially if you have order lap off which i hope you guys have been convinced to do so and you are doing a workout in the middle of a run so when i do have a workout where i'm hitting the lap button to segment the ons and the offs and the warm-ups and all that i like to be on this screen the most because i want to know what this lap's distance this lap's pace my current pace and the lap time as well let's say we're doing four by six minutes and we do the warm-up 3k's cool hit the lap button now we can forget about those 3k's from beforehand and focus on this rep we're in the first six minute rep we can kind of keep track of now how many kilometers we've done in the six minute rep or if you're like four minutes into the rep you'll know that in four minutes you covered this much distance it's also kind of handy to know your current pace as opposed to the lap pace so that you can see if you're kind of running quicker or slower than the average pace of the entire rep so far because we don't want to like jump up and down and up and down so i like to keep my current pace and the average pace of the lap quite similar because that just means you've held the same kind of effort slash pace the whole time assuming you're doing it on the flat and also the lap time is super helpful because obviously if we're doing a six minute rep then it's nice to know how many minutes we've done so far in that rep now this is exactly the same if we were to be doing distance based reps so if we're doing like kilometer repeats it's nice to know how far into the rep we are in terms of kilometers so we might 600 meters into the rep and you can see that immediately and also you can see how much time it's taken you to run 600 meters so far and you know that there's still 400 meters left in the rep all in one screen without having to switch between different streets so those are the four metrics i care about while doing it because once we finish the first rep of six minutes we hit the lap button and we go into the recovery period and now we can forget what the first rep was and we can focus on recovery and making sure we don't go over time or under the time and we can just keep an eye out on the 90 second recovery which i would do for four by six minutes but again it kind of depends on where you are in the season and all that but i can keep track of the lap time which will go up to 90 seconds and then once i see that it's up to 90 seconds i can hit the lap button and the second rep starts so this allows us to only focus on the current lap and having order lap off allows us to do that because if i were to do a six minute rep i am going to be doing more than a kilometer in that space of time and if i have order lap every single kilometer it's going to break up that six minute rep into a kilometer and then the remainder of the six minute rep which is annoying to look at afterwards when you're trying to analyze your data so that's another reason why i like to have order lap off now moving on to my next data screen i barely use it i honestly couldn't care less about this one but i just like having it anyway and again i never use it so i don't even know why i have it though but i have distance at the top i have total time at the bottom because those are usually the ones i care about the most and in the middle strip i have the average heart rate for the entire run and also current heart rate maybe you'll notice that the average heart rate is a bit lower than what your current heart rate is when you're going uphill and that sort of stuff and you're interested in that sort of stuff and if you have a heart rate monitor then it could be helpful to have a screen like that that's dedicated to looking at your heart rate so the fourth page is all about elevation at the top i have the elevation that you're currently at so let's say you're in the blue mountains you're probably going to be a thousand meters up from sea level and it's going to display that at the top which is kind of useful to know if you're training in altitude it's also ha handy to know what elevation you're at in terms of sea level so that's why i have that at the top in the second row i have elevation gain and elevation loss again as a guy that trains a lot for trails it's pretty handy to know what elevation is and i want to know how much climbing i've done in relation to descending i've done a lot of the times if you are starting at the top of a mountain and then ending at the top of the mountain as well while going down and stuff in between you can kind of look at how much elevation loss you've had versus how much elevation gain you've had and you can kind of tell how much climbing you have left to get back to where you started from if that makes sense same thing if you're starting at sea level and going up a mountain and down if you see that the elevation gain is like 400 meters and your elevation loss is zero meters you know that you're 400 meters up and you got 400 meters of descending to go obviously it will account for places where you have a bit of an uphill then a downhill and then an uphill but it's still like a net uphill and then you know you're 400 meters up but you still have a little bit of elevation loss but then you know that if you minus the two you know how much you have to go down page five is pretty helpful for me when i want to do uh 
Page 5 is pretty helpful for me when I'm doing like a stupid long run, like what I do. For example, when I did that 100k run from Tokyo to Hakone, this one displays the battery life of my watch and also the time of day. So if you're out for a long time, you probably will want to know if you still have enough battery to get through the entire run and also what time of day it is, whether sunset is approaching and all that. But I also like to keep the activity time at the bottom as well. And you'll notice a pattern where I have the activity time at the bottom of every single page because um, that's probably the one that I want to know the most. How many hours have I been running for? so far. So that concludes my data screens. I have five pages that are all tailored exactly to how I want it and I think not enough people actually look into the data screens and the settings that you can customize in it because I feel like everyone's different, everyone's training for different stuff and you're gonna want different preferences but I thought that if I share my preferences and my thought process behind why I have these five data screens it might be handy for you guys as well. So hope this video was of any value. I actually tried to look on YouTube to see if there's anything like this and I don't know if there's anything quite like the way I I presented this video so again the goal is to kind of give value in a way that no one else has done on youtube so far and i'd love to hear more feedback on what sort of content you want to see next so there's definitely more videos coming soon and also as always there's a buy me a coffee link in the description if this video was of any help and you have five dollars to spare or something i'd hugely appreciate a donation all this stuff adds up and it allows me to make better content because i can reinvest into the gear or the sort of content that i'm doing hugely appreciate it and uh yeah see you in the next video